This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte, a City of International Success is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Maha Gingrich. Coming up on Charlotte, a City of International Success, I will interview Marco Blazowski from Macedonia. He's a two-time Olympian trained right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Stay with us. Welcome to Charlotte, a city of international success. I'm Dr. Maha Gingrich. Today, our guest is Marco Blazowski. He is a two-time Olympic swimmer from Macedonia. Welcome to our show, Marco. Thank you, Dr. Maha. You know, it's a pleasure having you. You know, we spoke before the show, and I was amazed at such a young age, what you have done, what you have accomplished, and how much you have learned about your life. So we're going to start off first. You're from Macedonia. What part of Macedonia are you from? Yes, uh, I'm from the capital, Skopje, Macedonia. It's the northern part of Macedonia. It's where I was born 24 years ago. <laughs> Is it a big place, small place? It's, uh, it's the biggest, uh, biggest city in Macedonia. Yeah. It's almost half the, the population. Oh, wow. Uh, how is it? It's like hilly and... It's, uh, there's some mountains actually. It's, uh, Mount Macedonia is globally, it's a mountain. We have a few lakes. It really, a little bit of everything, honestly. Oh, that sounds really pretty. So what did your parents do? Yeah, my, my dad is a swim coach. That's how oh, I kind of okay. got into swimming. Okay. Whereas my mom is an English teacher, so I got a little bit of both. English teacher? No yeah. wonder your English is so good. <laughs> Do you have siblings? Thank you. Yes, uh, just one sister. She is younger. She is actually living in New Jersey right now, studying college. Oh, wow. Oh, that, yeah. that, that's great. So, um, you obviously, you went to school there, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, when we were talking, you talked about school system. Mm -hmm. which is very unique to me for schools. So um, you have elementary school mm -hmm. and high school up to 12, mm -hmm. right? 12 grades. Yeah. Okay. It starts first grade, just say here, and it, the education, it's up to 12th grade. First four years, it's elementary school. And mm -hmm. then fifth through eighth is middle school. Then nine through 12 is high school. And the interesting part that we talked about was we go to school from, uh, there's a morning shift and an afternoon shift. The morning in shift in school, yeah. Okay. The morning shift where, say, for example, the fifth to sixth grade will go in the morning, 7.30 to about noon. Yeah. And then one o'clock, seventh and eighth grade will go from one o'clock to about five. Really? Yeah. So they utilize the space very efficiently. Exactly, exactly. Saves energy and uh, yeah. instead of just heating it for nothing. That is amazing. Now, so if you go in the morning, mm -hmm. what happens when you come home? Do you have like after school programs? Do you have anything like sports that you have to do or? Yeah, so sports are yeah. pretty separate from, uh, from school. You go to school just for education. You go there, you do your classes. Uh -huh. And uh, then you're on your own. You gotta join a community club team if you wanna do sports or lessons for anything music, anything dance, oh. any of that. It's separate from the, the schooling system. So it's, it's private? Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. You learn yes. from somebody else? Yes, yes. An instructor or wow. anything like that. So you need to either get in one of those or have... Do you have babysitters? Uh, not popular. There's not popular at all. Okay. Usually a lot of families... <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, grandparents live in the house, grandparents huh. are the primary babysitters. I don't think babysitters even exist. I never heard of any of my friends having a hired babysitter. That's even better because, you know, you have the support of the family. Yeah. You know, if you happen to have grandparents and extended mm -hmm. family, like a joint family, staying with you, you know, there's so much worth to it because you learn about the family values, you learn about do's and don'ts from Absolutely. grandparents. And you get the unconditional love probably from grandparents. Of course, of course. You know, parents have to discipline you, but grandparents can. Yeah. <laughs> Show more love. <laughs> Show more love, exactly, exactly. They all have their responsibilities. So if that's what you did, then how did you get swimming? I mean, your yeah. dad obviously then, he was coaching for a private club then? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. My dad's uh, club team is called Swimming Club Vardar, which is actually the, the river that goes through Macedonia, the biggest river. Oh, neat. The club team it got the name through that. And uh, since we don't have babysitters, I was going to my dad's uh, practices mm -hmm. where he was coaching the, the older kids. And eventually it was just boring to stay there. And he pushed, <laughs> me, he pushed me more to start swimming, not training, really swimming to get water safety and just having fun when you're a young age. It's about, it's about uh, having fun. I think I started about when I was seven, seven years oh. old. Did you want to swim? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I, was, I was really skinny and uh, <laughs> water was always too cold for me for oh. a number of years. So I was not excited. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> yes, yeah. it probably was very cold. It, it, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So did you swim? So when you started the swim team, mm -hmm. uh, did you swim like every day? Is that? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it used to be. Yeah. It was when I started. I see, I think I started around seven. That's where I counted starting. <laughs> yeah, sure. At the beginning, it was just a few times a week, and then you just do it every day. The more uh, older you get, the more you can train and practice, and just having fun. I wanted to go to practice afterwards yeah. after a little bit after a lot, maybe a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So that drive when I really started to like swimming was when I got my first medal. Oh, when, when was that? I what think competition, it was, I was eight or nine. We went to a small meet locally, not locally, it was actually international in Bulgaria. They had a small age group, eight, eight or eight and under, nine and under yeah. group. And uh, it was a third place. I don't even remember the event and it was super exciting standing on the podium. And I think that's where I developed the, the love Maybe not for the sport yet, but for yeah. competing and racing. For competing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can understand that. So do you get, um, what, what do you do after that? How did you get into competitions? Yeah. So after that first medal, yeah. I started progressing through the ranks and going to a lot more competitions. Yeah. And when I was 14, I broke my first Macedonian national age group record oh. for 14 and under. Any particular stroke or how does it was that the, work? It was the 400 IM, which is the combination of all of the strokes. Oh. And that's when I first realized I had that dreams to compete internationally, yeah. to represent the country, which is on the, on the world's biggest stage. And I was thinking, started to think about the Olympics at that point, that it is a possibility rather than just a dream. Oh, that's, that's really neat. Yeah. Now, do you swim um, every day? You know, I asked that question. Mm -hmm. Uh, because here sometimes, uh, you know, they take like Sunday off or something mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, after 14, I started doing double workouts. So morning and afternoon. Yeah. And uh, my only off day was actually Monday. Monday? Yeah. That's, that's strange. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In Why? the U.S. is Sunday here usually. Yeah. And we took Mondays because pools were closed on Mondays oh. in Macedonia. <laughs> 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 Pools were closed. Yeah, so that's what really prevented us. That, was that the makes thing. sense. <laughs> no wonder you took Monday off, right? Yeah. Because pools were not yeah. open. Our week it's... started on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like you had many, many swimming pools that you go and swim in, yeah. right? Or yeah, train? in Macedonia, it's really tough. There's only two indoor swimming pools. Oh, wow. All across the country. There's a few more outdoors, but yeah. it gets pretty cold in the winter. And that's why swimming is... Uh, it's like an underdeveloped sport, I would say. Oh, wow. So you won your first medal. Mm -hmm. Then you started dreaming about Olympics or you mm -hmm. just started dreaming about competing? It's competing, just okay. winning. I, I hated to lose much, much more than I yeah. loved winning. I yeah. think there is a difference. Very few people understand it, but not. Tell, tell me, how do you see it? I think uh, winning is one thing. Everybody wants to be a winner at something. Yeah. But hating to lose, I think it's a bigger driver. Mm. Because I don't really remember my victories, but I remember when somebody beat me, and that's I wanna that pushes me more to to work harder. That, that's a very interesting concept. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. When you win, you don't remember the details. Yeah. But when you lose, you remember how somebody beat you. Exactly. You learn from the experience, yeah. which is one of the most important things, especially for. For younger kids starting yeah. out and also i think in swimming it's not like you have like one minute you have lost mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's really close that the races are really close and just learning experience from every close by seconds and millionth of a second right? seconds one hundredths of a second one hundredths of a second the time too yeah that is pretty intense it is it is it's a 
it's really a time sport, so just practicing about the time. You're kind of in a race with yourself, which is very individual in Macedonia until I went to college. That's which right. Is where I learned the team concept. So, what do you do then after, you know, you obviously started competing. Yeah. And um, uh, did you say you came to the U.S. as an exchange student? Wasn't yes, it? yes. When how, I was, how did uh, that happen? When I was 15, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, talking to my dad, I, ha I had those dreams for the Olympics and we realized that in Macedonia the conditions are not very good yeah. to be able to train, to take my training to the next level. Oh, okay. So at 15, I, was, I went as a foreign exchange student to California, all across the U.S., right next to the, the ocean on the other side. So that was, that was a big, uh, big change. I mean, not many people will, not many parents will send their kids at 15, but right. I knew it was, it was for the best of me the best opportunity to... The goal was to learn the language, learn the culture, yeah. learn about the NCAA collegiate system. Okay, you're not you... talking about basketball. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. What, what does the NCAA stand for? It's the Please. National Collegiate Athletic Association. Oh, okay. It's uh, <laughs> over all team sports uh -huh. in, in college. The goal was to get a scholarship, to go to a university, which yeah. is very unique. It's only in the U.S. you can combine studying taking your classes, getting your college degree, yeah. and sports at the same time for the university. It's oh, a very wow. unique, uh, unique system. So you did the exchange as an exchange student. You came mm -hmm. to California. Yeah. How was that for you? You know, you came by yourself, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How was that as a young man just leaving your country? And I mean, you, you grow up very quickly. I've been super independent my, my whole life, but... Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a good experience. I was living with a host family mm -hmm. for the first year and then a different host family the second year in California. Yeah. I, I still keep in touch with, uh, with some of them and uh, it's been, it, it was great. I appreciate their help for yeah. everything that, ha that, was, that I was able to accomplish while being there, learning the language, helping me learn how to drive. Got oh, a driver's <laughs> license when I was 16, 17. Oh, wow, in California. Yeah, yeah. My first license was California license. You know, nothing like staying with the family. Mm -hmm. You know, to really, uh, it's an emotion for you. Absolutely. On the culture and the language yeah. and the food. Yeah. I would think there'll be some difference in the food as well, right? Oh, definitely. A lot more burgers and fries over here. <laughs> <laughs> Versus what did you eat? Uh, we have a lot of, it's, the difference is we have a lot more soups, kind of bean soup, potato soup which with meat included and also a lot more vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, ah. which is not yeah. what many people practice here for their food. Right. And then right. we have our standard dishes such as moussaka and turli tava and mm. it's unique. And All then, those sound yummy to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. So you went back home? Yeah, every, California. every summer uh, while in California, I would go home Mm -hmm. trying to connect it with swimming, compete at our national championships yeah. and go to a junior, European junior championships during the time, see my family for a few months, and then move back to finish my high school yeah. uh, in, in California, which I did. And after graduating high school, I went back home for a couple of months and then enrolled at Wingate University. Oh, oh wow. In Wingate area. in North Carolina. Yeah. That is great. And now, did you compete anywhere else after that in between? Did yeah. you go for any other after the after the first year in California, that was yeah. 09. I went to Prague for European Junior Championships. Yeah. And then the next year, I went to Helsinki, another Finland, another European Junior Championships. Oh wow! And also that year, it was my first world level championship, the Youth Olympic Games in Singapore. Started college right afterwards at uh, 2010. I was actually going to stay in California. Yeah. But the swimming program I was going to, they cut their men's team and I decided that Wingate is where I want to be. I fell in love with the campus and it's been a, it's been a great time since then. Now, when did you go to Shanghai? Right after my first year of uh, college, 2011. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so I missed it a little bit there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after Singapore then, uh, obviously then, started um, college. you started college. Mm -hmm. And what did you do at the college? You got the scholarship, right, for yeah, swimming? Yeah, it was... What it was kind not, of swimming was that? It was not all swimming. It was yeah. swimming and academics. A lot of oh, people don't really realize good. that just athletic scholarship. Nowadays, it's really hard to get a full scholarship. That way, you got to combine a little bit of athletics and uh, academics being, uh, being a good student is really important. Wow. And the swimming aspect, back to your point, is in college, what I learned through the four years, it's 
it's a, it's a team environment. Mm -hmm. Whereas swimming back in Macedonia, even in California, was, was a lot more individual. You compete with yourself, mm -hmm. your times need to improve. Whereas in college, you compete, again, you race alone, but there's a lot more relay events and they hold a lot more points. And in the end, teams, teams uh, get graded on how many points they have and a team wins against the other team. Whereas before it was just your, oh, wow. your own placing. What did you learn? I mean, that is, I think, when you do something, any sport that is individual, mm -hmm. you're really competing with yourself Absolutely. and maybe a larger picture. Yeah. But really, you're focusing on yourself. Mm -hmm. You're focusing on you, what you're doing, how are you performing. You know, I joke saying me, myself and I kind yeah. of a focus, <laughs> you know. So now you had to do team sport. Yeah. What did you learn? I think it's very different because it's just not you anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the greatest things is uh, I, I like to lead by example. I was yeah. never a team captain in my, my college team, but leading by example is what, how I, I wanted to, to push the people around me. Mm. And uh, that's, that's really one of the greatest things. You can push people around you to train better. And going through the same pain torture of practice <laughs> yeah. makes it easier and more fun. Yeah, you, you have somebody else to share with. Somebody else to relate with. And who all those. understands. Exactly. You know, when you say, oh, that was a real you yeah. know, excruciating pain, yeah. they know what you're talking about. Miserable set. And what was the coach <laughs> thinking? Like, that's not realistic. <laughs> so the training that you did mm -hmm. um, at Wingate, yeah. was it any different from what you have done before, other than team sport? Besides team sport, I mean, it was very similar because my co all my coaches communicated through Macedonia, California, and then uh, at Wingate, it was a lot more distance based. Yeah. But it helped me, helped me a lot to, again, compete at the World Championships in Shanghai 2011. Tell me about that. Tell me yeah, about that. Yeah, it was my company. first senior level competition. Wow. Uh -huh. What was that? I think it was 18 at the time, 17, 18. Yeah. It was, it was really unique. I mean, the pool, they actually built a portable pool in a basketball arena. Oh. Yeah, in, in China. Oh, wow. It was about 10,000 people in the stands, 15,000 for a swim meet. That's, that's quite a lot. Wow, that's big. Yeah. But it was, it was a nice test right before London 2012 Olympics, which was the next year, which was my goal. Yeah. Coming into college, learning about that and going there. So in Shanghai, I got to compete against Michael Phelps and Ryan oh, Larkildo. Wow all the big name swimmers that were doing my, the same events as I. Yeah. Was it intimidating or was it? A little bit. I didn't do too good. Yeah. Not to the lack of preparation. Nervous, I, I think it. nervousness was the, yeah. the biggest problem. I can imagine 10,000 people plus watching you. Yeah. And then you're competing mm -hmm. and here we are the people like Michael Phelps with you. Yeah. And you're just 18. That, that's pretty intimidating. Yeah. It, it was, but I think I, I gathered a lot of information and I thought I'll be ready for the next year's Olympics, which I was able to qualify. So moving on a year later, yeah. going through college, another good year at the university championships and was able to qualify for London for the Olympics. Beautiful. Seemed ready. Everything was awesome. And I thought since I've been to Shanghai, like the Olympics will be just another world's meet. Yeah. It was even bigger. I was still nervous in the, in the morning oh, wow. of my, my main race. <laughs> London, I think, it was about 17,000 people. 17,000 yeah. people watching yeah. you. I'm not exactly sure if the, the stands were that packed in the mornings yeah. where my race was going, but it was, it was definitely a super unique experience. Yeah, but for your country, mm -hmm. hand-picked, right? Yeah. Just few? What, one or two? Uh, or just... There was only two swimmers oh, going wow. to London. Yeah. So the, the pressure is pretty big to, to perform when it's only two yeah. people. You can't fall through the cracks if somebody's doing good and you're no. doing bad. You have to do interviews here and there, which is uh, it's an exciting thing, but it can also be bad. Media is depends on uh, how, how you like it. You can either uh, help yourself go up or yeah. just uh, mop the floor with you. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. They, yeah. they could be pretty crude yeah. you know, when it comes to that. So what did you do after that? I mean, that's a, like a super experience. Yeah, from... it, was, it was wonderful. I mean, Olympic Games is once in a yes. lifetime. Oh my God. You're with the best. You know that you deserve your spot to be there, compete against the best and seeing all the other athletes in the Olympic Village. Cafeteria was the most popular place because everybody eats there. That's where you meet people. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Yeah, and just making it, what you said, mm -hmm. just making it to Olympics mm -hmm. in itself is an achievement. Absolutely, can't, can't agree with you more. You're yeah. among a super elite group, the 001% yeah. of the best. Wow. Yeah. What an experience. So after London Olympics, mm -hmm. what did you do? Went back to, back to college. I had two more years to finish my, my degree, which was finance. I studied finance with mm. a, a minor in economics. Yeah. So I went back, my favorite studied. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome, my too. <laughs> yeah. Again, went back another year, another successful time at the university championships. Were you still training at Wingate? Yep. Okay. Four years all in Wingate, still competing with the Wingate University Bulldogs. Ah, yeah, <laughs> go Bulldogs, yeah. Yeah, and uh, 2013, the next year, another World Championships there every two years. I went to Barcelona, Spain, another great experience. And after that, I was able to graduate in 2014. Mm -hmm. Graduating from Wingate, I mean, everybody is super excited. Get your college degree. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people after graduating just go into the workforce. Whereas for me, I was not happy with my results in London. Yeah. And I wanted to do this professionally to go to Rio and have a much better result. Wow. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is the reason why I was able to move to Charlotte, one of the best uh, swimming programs, postgraduate swimming programs yeah. in the world is here at uh, Swimac Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you trained with them. Yeah. And aren't there many others who trained? Who are some of yeah, the other people yeah. who trained? Yeah. Swimac has about a group of 3,000 people, but uh, our team was about 16 of us, all postgraduates, some couple uh, college, sw college swimmers. But the goal of us was to compete at the Olympics and try to win a medal at the Olympics. And the uh, head coach was the, the coach of the U.S. Olympic team, David Marsh, and some of the people that I trained with, Ryan Lochte, I mean, that's a trademark name. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> Colin yeah. Jones, wow. uh, a, a, lot, a lot of our, Kirsty Coventry, one of the most successful female swimmers in the world. And I can mention every name is going to pop up. You're going to yeah, yeah. miss somebody, but you're, yeah. you're just talking about super swimmers. Superstars, yeah, people yeah. that uh, have right been here. in the sport for so long and they're a bit older. So yeah. I was able to learn a lot more from them, how to train, how to take care of your body. Yeah. And, and mind. Uh, and mine, yeah, absolutely. A lot to do, you know, with losing and winning and mm -hmm. how do you handle that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the mental aspect is really big. All of us really decided that yeah. for swimming such individual sport, your mind is your biggest obstacle to achieve what you, what you want because everybody trains hard at the biggest level. You compete at the Olympics, of course, you're a good person in practice. Oh, wow. Wow. That so, yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing experience. I've been doing that for the last two years. Again, I had another World Championships 2015 in Kazan, Russia, which was a great test for Rio Whoa. 2016. Which So you went to Rio too? Yep, just ended that, came back a couple months ago. Great experience, I did my best time. I did not medal, but it was the best time. It was a Macedonian national record. Yeah, so oh, wonderful, good congratulations. Good under pressure, and it's, thank you, thank you. Oh, so your country must be so proud of you. I hope so. I mean, of course, they want medals, but... Yeah, well, no, just, <laughs> just, just representing a country like that, you mm -hmm. know, in, in Rio and these kind of... I mean, you're talking about the world coming together. Yeah. You know, that, that's not easy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. So what have you learned? You know, I mean, this is so competitive mm -hmm. and it's physically challenging, mm -hmm. mentally challenging for such a young person to stay focused. Mm -hmm. What have you learned with all this experience? Having the drive to push yourself really individually, that's, that is the most important thing. Time management, which I was able to gather a lot from Wingate University, being able to balance classes and school is what helped me a lot in my professional life and being a professional swimmer, I learned, I learned how to cook, I mean. Hey, that's <laughs> a big accomplishment. Yeah, swimming is not the biggest paycheck, but. Um, <laughs> You have to learn how to cook your food, which is, yeah. which is important, especially when you live alone. How are you applying all these wonderful things that you have learned mm -hmm. in, you know, you graduated, you started a career, you started a regular job. Yeah. And you said a very nice thing. You said you have traded your swimsuit. Yeah, I traded my swimsuit for a business suit. I just started, <laughs> <laughs> just started working with uh, Northwestern Mutual in the financial planning world, putting that oh. finance degree into work. And 
it's been it's been awesome. I know I've put all my focus into training. I've been successfully swimming. I'm doing the same now for the business world. You're applying the same principles. Exactly, exactly. You know, of staying focused, committed mm -hmm. to anything that you do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. As long as you put your mind on the goal, anything is possible. That's the that's my message to everybody. Yeah. What are your next steps? Because you have graduated. Mm -hmm. You're probably your daddy is going, hey, you know, get yourself together, go ahead and swim. Yeah. And then probably mom is doing, you know, focus on education, right? Because yeah, she's educated. Exactly. My dad has always been pushing me more for the swimming part and my mom is a lot more for the education. So I'm trying to get a balance <laughs> of both. Yeah. Get, start my work life and also continue swimming for to compete at another world championships and we'll see above. So what are you doing? Are you doing anything right now other than resting or you're preparing for something else? I have uh, the world championship, short course world championships in Canada in, in four weeks. Which oh, I'm, I'm wow. going, yes. Oh. It's, uh, it's exciting. It's going to be my sixth world championships, which is, it's awesome. Just represent my country at the best level as possible. You know, I'll, I'll tell you that I'm positive that your parents are very, very proud of you and your drive to succeed as mm -hmm. well as your country and Charlotte, North Carolina, Absolutely. is very honored to have you and your team here training. And we are very proud of you because when we cheer, we cheer for all of you because you trained right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, Thank so you. Uh, hearty congratulations. I wish you so much success in the future. Mm -hmm. I think you have everything that's needed to become very successful no matter what you're going to you know, pursue. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you. And thank you for watching Charlotte, a city of international success. I'm Dr. Maha Gingrich. Please join us again next time right here on WTBI TV Charlotte. of PBS Charlotte.